Happy Mental Health Awareness Month. And here on this channel, we love using comedy to talk about mental health, to make light of life. You can see by the title, it's about women, the matriarchy, if you will, the, the modern feminist. I don't mean all women, obviously. I am a woman. It's probably less than 50% of women I'm talking about in this video. But it's mainly women, some men that have a lot of triggers, unresolved issues they haven't worked on mentally. Don't get me wrong, the patriarchy isn't all what it's cracked up to be either. I made a video about men too. They didn't get out of this unscathed. We're currently heading into communist times because of women preaching socialism and oh, I'm a good person. We'll get into everything. Boring. Americans are more alone, depressed, obese than ever. I have a video that walks you through your triggers on what would be the best meditation for you depending on your trigger and I have another video that I'll link below of how to resolve your triggers. So just remember law of attraction is always working. I'm going to put up a chart showing high vibrations and low vibrations but when you're in high vibrations you know comedy, laughter, happiness, love, all these high vibrations the law of attraction is the law of you universe. It's always working in your favor or against you depending on your frequency. If you have low frequency like jealousy, greed, anger, depression, all those low vibrations, then positive stuff isn't going to happen for you. So we're going to be talking about how modern day feminist and the matriarchy is ruining so much in America. We're talking mainly America. realize and notice when it came to the patriarchy it was always the strongest the most bravest man the one that wanted to protect all the women and children alpha man was always in charge of the patriarchy the one that works the hardest the most confident man is like the top of the pyramid when it comes to the patriarchy but the matriarchy is completely different it's usually the weakest in the room. You know how the loudest in the room is usually the, you know, weakest in the room, the one with the most insecurities? Well, since women are so maternal and nurturing, we like, we coddle each other. So it's usually the one that screams the loudest is going to be the leader. The Karens are the ones screaming, playing victim. We are told nowadays that feminine qualities are virtuous and male qualities are oppressive. And men and women, we all have different qualities and traits that, are, I mean, women can bear, make life. But really, us women are amazing when we're not playing victim. And the reason why these insecure women are put on a pedestal and become the leaders is because we coddle them. And I am guilty of this. I am still a woman. Like, have you been around an insecure woman? They're always a victim and it's woe me every single day and you don't you don't want that to mess up your day so you're like oh pretty girl pretty girl oh he he doesn't deserve you 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 coddle them because you don't want to hear it but all us women are guilty of this i'm not going to call anyone grumpy and frumpy to their face we're only saying one week out of the month because of our menstrual cycle <laughs> In the patriarchy, men bust each other's balls when they start losing and thinning their hair or when they gain weight and they're like, hey man, you're gaining a bunch of weight there and they start like, you know, busting each other's balls and they don't get triggered or offended because that's how men talk to each other. They're just real and they joke around. But not with the matriarchy, they just lie to each other and coddle each other. In the patriarchy, an inferior man will never challenge the masculine men because they have masculinity issues. But it's not like that with the matriarchy. With the matriarchy, the more insecure women are louder with rage of jealousy. The body positivity movement or lack of movement. <laughs> First of all, laziness is not commendable. I've never felt good about myself when I've been lazy. And it's just a fact that lazy people are unattractive. Your insides reflect your outsides. If you're ugly on the inside, you're ugly on the outside. And the crazy part is every human being is it could be attractive. So if they're not attractive, there's reasons, there's red flags on why don't they care about themselves inside and out. And you know those bad actors are always going to be saying that you're bullying them and they're going to play victim. 
The body positivity movement is so toxic and dangerous in itself that I'm going to make its own separate video too. I'm just going to go over a few points in this video. First of all, let me start off by saying if you are underweight or overweight, that is dangerous, that is unhealthy, and is also not good for your mental health. With being underweight or overweight, that can lead to depression and narcissism. What do we have going on right now? Narcissistic culture. Remember, if you're underweight or overweight, that can also lead to heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer in America. And this is when everyone's excuses and victim complex starts coming in the comments. Like, everybody has a different body type. Everyone's body is different. BMI is so outdated. My thyroid, my knee. This one's my favorite. Belly pooch fat is healthy for women in pregnancy. A big fupa is dangerous for a pregnancy because anybody that is overweight and pregnant is a high risk pregnancy for the person that's pregnant and the baby. And the BMI is not outdated. Most women have to eat less than 15,000, 1500, sorry, 15,000, 1500 calories a day. I eat 1200 if I'm working out and I eat 1000 if I'm not working out that day. This includes your drink. It's just math. You have to learn your BMI and how many calories you're allotted in a day. It's not hard. And most of these women are drinking those calories in their drinks, in their Stanley cups, in like coffee. Like those have like thousands of calories in it. And a large tall man that's like six foot that should have 2000 calories. And some of these women eat as much as a man. Like when they serve themselves dinner, they have the same portion as a man. Plus they're drinking all the extra coffee that a man's not. You can always find another lazy person online to like commend you. What's the word? Enable you to like, you know, just be lazy and play victim because misery loves misery. Cancel culture and woke culture made everyone believe that you can just scream at them. Racist, fascist, homophobic, fatphobic, all these words if you're being challenged. I forgot their favorite one. They love to scream misogyny and we'll get into the whole misogyny thing because they want to play victim because they don't want to do the work. It's easier to blame people for your reality than just to take accountability for your reality. Everything you do creates your reality. Everyone has a diet. If you eat, you have a diet. But is it a good diet or is it a bad diet? Also, everybody has an ED. Everybody eats sometimes too much in a day. Sometimes people eat too little in a day. Not everyone eats the right amount of calories every day. So when you strip away all these victim words, you're just left with responsibility and actions you should take. Here's another secret. Everyone can eat less and everyone can work out. I'm just going to add the online portion here because I didn't know where to fit it in. But I think because back in the day, people used to have to work hard for results. So like if people had a nice physique, it's because they worked in the fields. Everyone had farms back then. You were working for your food. There wasn't grocery store. But sometimes people just live online to where they just want that instant gratification, that dopamine hit. I've made a video about dopamine if you want to check it out. With the click of a button that someone can just order a Stanley cup and get it the next day. With the click of a button, they can have that coffee sent to their house with Uber Eats. They can have food sent to their house. If you want to date, you can just a click of a button, a swipe. You can be talking to someone a minute. Nothing you have to work hard for. This brings me to my next point that women are the largest consumer base. Not only do women love to shop, their partners love to buy them gifts, shower them with gifts. They're getting gifts coming from all angles. So with women being the largest consumer base, this ruins just about everything. When you control the market, you control the investors, the politicians, the government. Uh, we'll get in more into all that later. Insecure women tend to be extremely materialistic because they like that instant gratification. This is why everyday toiletries are so expensive, like deodorant, body wash, tumblers, because these women will pay for it to show that they're elitism. And it's so confusing to me, since women are the largest consumer base and everything is so inflated in price because they want everything to be expensive, they're always about capitalism and it's like 
we have you to think. I would be about capitalism too if I was going to Dutch Bros or Starbucks two to three times a day or going to Target two, three, I don't go to Target, but going there a few times a week because they would never work on their self inside mentally or outside physically with exercise that they kind of just decorate their bodies like big Christmas trees. Like all the stuff they put on themselves are like ornaments, like their nails and their purse and their, their cup. And they can only have like items to like decorate. Like, look at me. I'm important to society. I'm a leaf. Insecure women, basic bees, thrive on the seven deadliest sins. We'll go through them all. Pride, no accountability for their actions, reality, what they look like, they play victim. Envy, they call confident women that work on their body, mind, and soul, and personality pick me's because they're jealous. Wrath, the hatred and resentment of the white man. <laughs> <laughs> Greed, Target, Uggs, all that expensive stuff they want. Gluttony, coffee four times a day with a thousand calories each cup. Lust, men, money, revenge. They always scream misogyny, but they need to have a man by them size. An insecure woman, they'll just jump man to man. They can't be single. Because they don't have that validation in themselves. They don't have self-love. Insecure women love revenge. They love having revenge on their exes or women they're jealous of. But with that, like, with that malice intent, what am I trying to say? Well, revenge is not like a good vibration. With that lower vibration, with revenge, that's going to come with karma. This next portion is going to be about the music industry and how the matriarchy, how feminist has ruined music. And I used to be so into music. This one pisses me off. I was watching a YouTube video that was talking about the history of Coachella and the person narrating it was like a younger girl. She was... She's cute, she's all young, but she was contradicting herself throughout the whole video. She was talking about how when Coachella started, it was all about the music and it was really cheap because it was just about people seeing their favorite bands. Again, she was talking about how now it's all full of influencers and how expensive and how vapid it is now. I went to high school in the 90s, so I am a huge fan of rap and R&B. It'll always be like my oldies. But once I got into my like 20s and stuff, I got really into rock bands. And Coachella started in 1999, I believe. I was 19 years old. So when Coachella started, it was a lot of the bands that I watched all the time, like Tool and Rage against the machine i'm not a fan of like celebrities now and rage against the machine is a joke now but you know it was like all the bands it was so fun back in the day being at shows or festivals because you're in a big group of friends and there's guys and girls and everyone's just jamming to the music and it's such a vibe like everyone's just there to party so when coachella first started it was all about seeing your favorite bands for a cheap price and you didn't have to go all three days but the, the whole venue was losing money for the first several years so that's why they started raising the prices you had to stay all three days the prices got you know it's like 400 500 and then it turned into the Coachella we know today full of celebrities and influencers having a fashion show like I like Alana Del Rey as much as the next person but that's music I would like listen to by myself crying if I was like depressed or something same with like taylor swift i don't like taylor swift i'm not a fan of taylor swift but like listening to taylor swift that would be something you would do alone in your room or maybe if you're going through a breakup and you you invite over a few girlfriends and you guys all play it and cry together like that kind of vibration shouldn't be in a large mass with people we're going back to the vibration theme i like sabrina carpenter i don't really listen to her but i think she's adorable because she's like an inch taller than me taylor swift and most singers and most comedians all they do is either sing or tell jokes about men and misogyny and it's like find a hobby find a personality like what
Our whole lives, everything is men's fault. It's the misogyny of it all, the patriarchy. Smiling was made up by the patriarchy, don't smile. And they're always like, I'm a bad bitch. And it's like, you're not a bad bitch when you're blaming everyone for your issues. Okay, so here's my point to the Coachella video. So this little girl was talking about Coachella, how it was good back in the day and how it sucks now. But in at the end, in the same token, she's all, well, in modern times, they had like an Asian... I don't know the name, like an Asian rock pop girl group that performed in recent years. And they also had Bad Bunny, who's a Puerto Rican rapper, like recently. And she's all, so yeah, we have diversity um, in the modern times. And we finally got rid of the white man ban. Finally, diversity. What she was trying to say is she ended it that now Coachella is better because there's no white male bands. Dude, it was better back in the day. That's what you said in your videos. It was more fun when we had the white male bands. Say hi to everybody. Say hi to everybody. It's Jacob. He just woke up. He's a little grumpy. But let's talk about celebrity worship syndrome or celebrity obsession disorder, also known as COD. These are people that like worship everything celebrities do. But this is like normal for people like in their teens or 20s. But this is like some adults haven't grown up yet. And this is what we're talking about. The women that are in their 30s and 40s still doing celebrity culture. And it's like, well, it's not good for anyone to idolize celebrities mentally or as an adult. Like they're celebrities. They're not on our side. So I think celebrity culture in general is just weird. Um, Grown-ups don't idolize celebrities. But nowadays, these women pick teams. They say, like, team whoever, team, like, like this is, like, Twilight. But these women are, like, in their 30s or 40s. Now let's get into movies and TV and Hollywood and stuff. So movies have sucked for the last few years. We all know this. A lot of um, superhero movies that are like girl boss movies, which no one wants to see that. Those aren't traits women usually have. They're, oh, it's just so stupid. Just doing all this to please the woke mob. But the woke mob isn't shoveling out money to see these stupid movies because they're bad movies. They ruin storylines. There's no character development. There's nothing to these movies except for agenda. They're just really boring. Due to the woke mob, which I think is majority of these women, the, because of these woke women, white people aren't even allowed to be in commercials anymore. And white people make up like 71% of America. <laughs> Now the woke mob with their pitchforks isn't anything new in history. Like history is just repeating itself. Like Malcolm X said that the white liberal is the most dangerous. What did he say? White liberals are black folks worst enemy appearing to care, treating everyone else as victim doesn't make you a good person. It's patronizing. And in 2024, it's important, it's extremely important to understand politics and mental health to survive. Has anyone read 1984? Really good read. You should read it. it it's about, uh, it's an, a dystopian novel about explaining how socialism turns into communism. And I'm going to read an insert out of it. It was always the women and above all the young ones who were the most bigoted adherent of the party, follower of slogans, amateur, spice, and noisier out of the unorthodoxy. Which means it's always the women that want to be, oh, I'm a good person, I'm a good person that wants to say, oh, black lives matter. It's like, that's racist, first of all. <laughs> Women are so maternal and nurturing, they don't want to be called out as a bad person, that they just want to coddle everyone. And that's where socialism and communists happen. What I've noticed personally is people that play victim and that are jealous and insecure, all the frumpy people are basic B. They lean left. And people with confidence that do the inner work, that have personalities, that have common sense, they usually lean right.
Basic bees call the women with confident um, pick me's um, because women with zero self love or value to themselves, their only value is men. So the women with confidence usually get attention from men. So they call them pick me's. <laughs> now, pick me's are normally married or pick me's have sworn off men. I have sworn off men. We get so much attention because men don't want to have a girl where they have to run out and get her coffee or they have to watch like Ham's Maid's Tale or you're like, Taylor Swift for president. Pick me's get a lot of attention because they have a sense of humor. They don't get all these triggers. They don't scream misogyny. If you don't agree with them, then you're against them. And then if you're against them, you're not a girl's girl. And it's like, I am not a girl's girl. I'm an adult woman. And I'll never be a, a girl's girl when there's bad mothers out there. There are horrible mothers out there. So I'm not just going to be a girl's girl at the drop of a whim when there's insecure, miserable women out there. I'm all about frequency. I'm going to hang out with people that share my frequency. So yeah, don't try to be a girl's girl just to play into someone's delusion. Just notice if you're someone that's always like, whoa, me, like take a step back because it's never too late to take accountability and take responsibility but that's all I have for today if you like this one give it a big thumbs up if you know where I'm coming from if you feel the same way please subscribe I need more like-minded people and I'll see you in the next one